I'm reading to you from Luke 24. If you can go with me. On the first day of the week, early, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. My question, these ladies, they prepared something for Jesus. They went through the tomb with a certain expectation, expecting the body of Jesus to be in the tomb. Hello? My brother, my sister, we prepare something even for the Lord according to our expectation of where He will be, how He will be there, and what He will be doing there. Hello? So according to your expectation of where Jesus tomorrow will be, according to that you will prepare your life if you say you live for him. And even if you say you live for him, you want to do something for him, it will be according to your expectation of where he is tomorrow. Where is Jesus tomorrow with you? Where do you expect him to be tomorrow? They expected him to be dead in a grave. And sometimes, when we come with a certain expectation and we want to do something for the Lord and we trust Him that everything will, will go fine and everything will be good, and then it doesn't work out as we expected it would work out. And then, are we staying with God and hearing what does He want to say to us? Why did it happen in this way? Or are we just walking away. I tried to do this, it didn't work out, and I walk away. The ladies could have done that. They've prepared something for him, for his body. And they got disappointed because he didn't see his body. His body wasn't there. But praise God, they stayed and waited for, and while standing there, the angel spoke to them. Allow God to speak to you when you see something that doesn't work out the way that you thought it will. Because maybe something major, 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 better, bigger, greater has happened than what you expected to happen. Okay, amen. For the three. Lord, it truly is. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes with lightning, like lightning, stood beside them. In their flight, in their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? My brother, are you looking for Jesus in the right place? Among the dead. You have an issue of someone or you have a struggle. Um, you're taking the counsel of who? You're taking the counsel of who? Where are you looking for answers? Make sure you are in a place where God will be. But going to the tomb where he is not going to into places where and you and you try to find an answer for things that god's not going to answer you god's not going to speak to you about certain things and you can stay there they can stay there in the tomb and wait on god for an answer because last time he was there i will faithfully stay here i will stay here last time i saw him here and i will stay here where i saw him Really? Don't stay in an, empty, in an empty tomb waiting for an answer. But go with what God has for you, even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it doesn't make sense. He is not here. He is risen. He has risen. Remember. Everybody say remember. The angels said to the ladies, remember. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The word says the Holy Spirit will come and he will not speak out of his own. He will speak the words of Jesus. He will speak about Christ, the word of Christ, and he will explain it to us. He will remind us of the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you come into a situation, you don't know, understand what's happening. Let the Holy Spirit remind you not to explain everything what's happening, but to remind you of the words of what Jesus said. And in the light of his word, find understanding. When you don't understand, why not left, why not right? Go back to the word and what God has said. What did he say? And in the light of what he said to you, things will become to make sense. Things will start to make sense in today. When things doesn't make sense, somewhere you need to be reminded by the Holy Spirit about the words of Christ. When things doesn't make sense, are, are you with me? Run back to the Word with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit remind you and bring sense into what God said. Amen. But many times, not running to God and we don't understand what's happening. But we don't allow ourselves to be reminded by the Holy Spirit about what God said in His Word. And then we don't understand what's happening in our lives. They remember these words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to the others. It was Mary and the rest of the ladies, verse 11. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. You have a certain experience with God, you experience certain things in the word, and then you know, sometimes your flesh and sometimes people around you think you're talking nonsense. Then the ladies didn't get an attitude and judge the, the men. Can you believe it? <laughs> they, they stood still with what they believed. The ladies, they were there. They saw what they saw. They had this experience with God. They come back and the hope in you and what you believe can be tested by brothers and sisters. Can be tested in a place where people around you can... Look at you, smile, but you can see in their eyes, they don't believe one word that you are saying. You ever had that before? Or just me? You know? Yes, 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 yes. And you can see in their eyes, they don't believe one word that you are saying now. <laughs> yeah, these guys didn't believe them. But they didn't move away from them. They stayed with him. They stayed with him, the ladies even. Hello? Even if the men didn't believe them. Don't take offense when people don't see everything the way that you see it. Don't take offense. Stay in covenant relationships. Stay so that you together still can see. Because these guys, these ladies and these men, they're going to see something amazing, 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 amazing. And when they had to take offense, an uh, uh, opportunity to take offense, they didn't take offense. When the others thought this amazing, amazing event of the ages, that they thought you're talking nonsense. Hallelujah. All I can say with that is, oh, I can leave it there even. Please allow the Holy Spirit to remind you about God's words. Are you with me? Because if you're not going to allow Holy Spirit to remind you of the words of Christ, the devil will remind you of the words of your sin, of your past, of your thoughts. And he will be there. He will take easily, faithfully, he will take the place of where the Holy Spirit was supposed to, in your mind, remind you about the words of Christ. Some other spirit will take that place and remind you about the words of what somebody said said to you in a bad way or what you said to yourself and hello but somebody will remind you about something rather let it be the holy spirit that will remind you about what christ said about you and how excellent you are and how great you can be in christ hello and how you are forgiven and what he has done for you 
But you don't, you're not busy with that. You don't you get yourself into the word. The devil will make sure you are is getting you into some other stuff. You choose who it will be. It's not not Christ and not the devil. If it's not Christ, it will be the devil. He's not stupid. He will take the place. And he will remind you about a lot of rubbish. And then sometimes when we cannot get a breakthrough, sometimes when we cannot get a breakthrough and we are struggling with this, with certain thoughts and certain things happening in our lives and we're fighting that, you're not supposed to fight that. You just need to get into the Word and so that you cannot just remember the Word, but get into the Word and the Word will fight that. Get into the Word and the Word will work. The, work, the Word will fight that other rubbish. Are you with me? Uh, you are still here? Thank you, David. Okay, good. I want to give you the two guys, the Emmaus, Emmaus gangers. What is hungers? The Emmaus hungers. The Emmaus. You don't have. Uh, travelers. Travelers. Yeah. travelers, something like that, eh? Okay, great. Now that the same day, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, uh, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. They were talking about everything that happened. My brother, my sister, yeah. There will be people, there are people they can talk to one another about certain stuff. You won't believe it. But when there's certain talk that you can have with people, my question is, what are you talking about? Because they say, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked him, what are you discussing together as you walk along? He knew what they discussed, but he was asking, what are you discussing? Now, what I'm saying is your conversations that you will have with people. It can be in such a way that Jesus wants to, instead of just going to the twelve, I mean, to going to the disciples and, and, and Mary and all of them, he first take a detour. And he's going to these guys that are in a discussion. But he wants to be part of that discussion. Because what you discuss and how you discuss certain things, hopefully Jesus would say, I want to be part of that discussion. I want to be part of your discussion. What type of discussions do you have with people? Is it discussions where Jesus would say, I want to be part of this discussion. I want to be part of this fellowship, this fellowshipping, this, this uh, being together. Or is the type of things that we talk to people about a thing where if I have this negative spirit, or if I have this um, spirit of, of stress or negativity or criticism or whatever, or, or lust, or rejection, or judging, or whatever. And the demon, that demon says, I, I can have a good conversation with them. When I hear what they're discussing, that's the type of fellowship I would like. And then rather the devil, that demon of rejection, or, or of judgment, or whatever, that chocha, that rubbish. Uh, so what are you discussing about? What are you talking about, you know? Because it's, it looks like my type of party. It looks like my type of vibe. My type of fellowship. And that spirit will make sure that what you discuss will be destruction. For your own lives and for others. And for the people that you're talking about. But it was so amazing and so special. That these two guys, what they discussed, that Jesus felt... I'm not going to the disciples. I'm first going to go and be part of this discussion that they have. May that be your life. That the type of discussions that you have, that Jesus has a desire to become part of that discussion. Are you with me? When you need solutions, when you need to figure out certain things, we need to speak to one another. 
We need to be able to discuss and, and not just put our opinion out there, but with an attitude of, you know, this happened and that happened. And what is, what am I doing with what I'm experiencing? And I, when I speak to the right people, because I can experience something and I have this issue that I'm getting now with uh, Patrick. With Patrick. Now I can go and I can dis go and discuss this with uh, Ayanda. But I know Ayanda actually also has an issue with Patrick. So he will hear what, I, he will understand what I'm feeling. So it's me and Ayanda and very quickly that other demon will say, uh, what are you guys discussing about? What are you talking about? Because he liked, would like to be part of this discussion. This is his type of cup of tea. This is his way. Hello? Or I could be discussing something in a way where we're not just talking about scripture the whole time. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm talking about the beauty of life, talking about certain principles, talking about life. But what we're talking about life is godly. It's, it's, it's building. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's great. But in a place of confusion, where these guys, they were confused. They were frustrated and they were confused. But you know, when you can get frustrated and you can get confused, whoa, 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 something can manifest when you're frustrated and confused. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Don't, don't come and, and cause trouble here now. With frustration and confusion, I can, can become irritated. Ah, and then all the fruit of the Spirit, they are there in a basket around the corner. <clears throat> but they're not close here. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you with me? Don't, don't, don't die now. Uh, your flesh can die, but you are alive. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, where are we now? What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? He says to the risen Christ. <laughs> I can be so in myself with my turmoil and what I'm going through that I even could try and correct and question the living Christ standing in front of me, speaking to me. May God help me that my discussion, I will not put my emotions and myself so in my frustration or the things that I don't understand that I cannot recognize the one speaking to me. That I'm not able to recognize that he's actually the risen Christ speaking to me right at this moment. Hello? You are here? What things? He asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet. Powerful in word and in deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But he, we had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem us. We had a certain hope. You have certain hope in you. And you have hopes that certain things will happen. And you have hoped that certain things would have happened. What do you do with a disappointment when things didn't go your way? When even the things that you looked to Christ, you looked to Jesus for for certain things to happen. And you hoped that certain things will happen with you and Jesus, you and Christ. And it didn't happen that way. What are you going to do? Lose the hope? But in that frustration and in that place, he, they don't go and sit with in hopelessness. In your discussion with somebody, you cannot come into a place of total hopelessness, total, what's the word, discouragement, and be deceived. But remember, your eternal hope will always be there, Jesus Christ. 
We hoped that this will happen. And they say this to their eternal living hope. Speaking to their eternal living hope. They say, we hoped certain things would happen and it didn't happen. We are totally confused now. Hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more? What is even more? <laughs> what is even more? It is the third day since everything took place. <laughs> what is even more? We are in the day of the greatest breakthrough of humanity. What is even more? You are standing right in front of your breakthrough. So many times. At that moment of absolute breakthrough and impact for your life, the onslaught from the devil is the, the most intense. I mean, you, we've said that a thousand times, the 12, 12 spies, the 10 and the 2. But they had a discussion with one another. Like these two guys, they had a discussion. But the discussion was in such a way with these two guys that Jesus felt he must become part of the discussion. That other discussion they had was like, we don't believe what we don't believe the promises of God. We have our discussion based on what we experienced in, in when we looked into the land Canaan. And now, based on our discussion, we fire Moses, we kill Joshua and Caleb, and we go back to Egypt. That is, that is it. God was not part of that discussion. And after the discussion, he came down and said, Okay, it will be accord, as according to your discussion, according to how you discuss things. So it will happen. Out of the, a place of discussion, where these people talk to one another, they ruled God out of the picture, fired the leader, that they saw how God used that man, and wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb. They stood with the truth. Sometimes your flesh would want to kill the one giving you the truth. They even gave them the promises of God. They said, this is from God. God gave us the land. God gave us the land. There's so much that God has for us. And your flesh wants to kill that guy. Speaking the truth and the promises of God. May God help us to understand. Our flesh don't like truth. Does not like the truth. But we're going to believe it. We're going to believe the truth. Amen. Yeah, what is more, the third, it's, still, it's the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women, <laughs> in addition, some of our women, mm -hmm. nobody said that before, eh? In addition, some of our women amazed us. Other translations talk about they frustrated us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find the body, his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. They frustrated us. I let us frustrate. And sometimes when you are in a place of confusion and somebody would come and speak to you what God is actually saying, that will make you even more miserable. It could make you more frustrated. The truth will many times first frustrate you in the place where you are at. If you are stuck in frustration and you just want to be left alone because you feel frustrated, you feel even the frustration can even leave you angry. It can leave you that you are, um, what's the more word for myth? You are miserable. You are just feeling sometimes, not you guys, but some other people, you know? Sometimes we'd feel miserable when you don't understand what's going on and, and it's not happening like you wanted it to happen. You are disappointed because things didn't work out the way you wanted it to, uh, to work out. And for no logical reason, it didn't work out. In that place of irritation or frustration, when somebody brings some truth to you, most of the times the truth can irritate you. And will frustrate you even more. <laughs> Are you with me? But allow it to happen. May God have put, put people in your life. That are willing to bring to you the truth. Even 
if it frustrates you, even if you're going to let them know that you are frustrated. Even if you will tell them they are talking nonsense, but they will still stay with you. You need people like that, that will speak to you the truth. Hello? And if it's always in the perfect way, no, it's not always going to be in the perfect way. Because they're also just human. But may there be people speaking to you the truth. Even when you are frustrated. And even if you feel more miserable afterward, after that. As you admit, me, you are with me. Because if you stay with that and say, God, what are you saying to me? You will see the risen Christ. You will see the living Christ in your life. And he will manifest himself to you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Okay. Then he said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Foolish because I'm slow to believe the word. You know, when there's an attitude or there's a negative vibe or thing, then you, you find yourself slow to believe the truth, slow to believe, to give grace, slow to forgive, slow to, to, to walk with somebody the extra mile, slow to, to give your heart in love towards that person. And when you find that in your, in your life, how you can become slow to react to the word, slow that is when I'm foolish. That is when I'm foolish. How foolish you are. And the foolishness is to be slow to believe what God is saying. Slow to forgive. Slow to give love. Slow to give grace. Slow to stand with what God has. Slow when I hear the word to take the word. Slow to have that time with God. Slow Hello? Is it a mate? Hello? May God help us. May God help us that we will not be slow in that. I said in the first service, so the more we speak into uh, the word, the more to the end of the service, you know, it's like you see in the eyes of people becoming slower. Oh, and especially if they heard the teaching for the second time. Ah! Oh! It's like death is in the place, you know. It's like they, they manifest in the slowness, you know, if you've heard it the second time. You know, when you have certain, the guys out there in the world, they hear a song and they like that song. They listen to it once and never ever again. No. If you love the word, you love to hear it again. So don't say, I love the word. If you're not willing to hear it again. So I can repeat the sermon for the next four Sundays. Is that okay? You will still be coming? Uh -huh, that's what you say now. <laughs> what am I saying? My brother, my sister, may God open our eyes so that we will not be foolish to be slow. Foolish because we are slow with the word. What, do, is, what really excites you? If you must evaluate today, what really excites you? What gives you excitement? And evaluate that and make sure your priorities in it is right. Because you can learn that certain things will excite you. You don't know the, the, the impact of discipleship to smoke. Smoking is horrible, man. I don't know. When I tried it when I was very young, it's disgustable. Oh. But in the vibe, in the vibe of everybody, in the group, you, okay, no, you try it again, and you try it again. And then you say, ah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, ah, ah. And you start to believe what they say, and then you believe it, and then you believe it yourself. The God gave you some chimney, you know, for some reason. Smoke in, smoke out, you know, all that type of rubbish. That you can believe. But you put, set yourself up in that. Why did I say that? <laughs> Nobody knows. Okay. Say again. 
Discipleship. Ja, discipleship. Dank je, man. Dank je, manier. Halleluja. That you can in, have influence on others in such a way. That you, if you I'm slow, and you're going slower, you know, I'm excited about something, then you can draw people in. And people go with you. So we're excited about this, and when we get to the word, you know. Yes. My, my, my son and my daughter very much, they very, get very excited when we have time with the word. Yeah. And it's not like they're never excited, but, you know, if we're going to share a little bit. You know. um, when, when the sermon, really, when, when it goes through an hour, it's like things manifest in people. It's, it's amazing. You know? When a movie, when you watch a movie, and the movie is one hour and 20 minutes, eh? Yeah. One, one and a half hours. Right. Hey, 90, 90 minutes. <gasps> if that movie goes to 100 minutes, most of the people, they don't finish the movie. They don't, they don't watch the movie anymore. Is it, it's like that. Hey, no, nobody watched the movie. If, if a movie is, instead of 80 minutes, it is 90 minutes. And if that movie is 100 minutes, they will freak out and for the next month talk about that movie of 100 minutes that they had to watch. And they couldn't bear it anymore. No, it doesn't happen like that. But with a word, it happens like that. If... You know, if that sermon it was that sermon was ten minutes longer than normally. Or in the night, you have time with the word. You have time nine o'clock to ten past nine. Because ten past nine to ten past eleven it's time for the phone. No, not one of you guys. <laughs> not one of you guys, no. But we set ourselves up in our expectation. I expect that within 10 minutes, it's finished. I've done my duty. Or I have an expectation that maybe at the end of the 10 minutes, I would actually would love to carry on in the Word with God. I would love to have extra time. I will look forward to His Word, to having this time with Him. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let it be so in Jesus' name. But you even come to the Word and you just want to have the answers, you will stay frustrated. Because many times God will not answer you. Because He wants you to focus on Him, not to focus on the answer. Are you with me? So, seek Him. Seek Him with His agenda. Seek Him with His agenda. The, the risen Christ. Amen. Is it not so? How foolish are you? Slow slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? He beginning, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. At home when he was there and he ate with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and they had an excellent time. No. The eyes were opened, they recognized him, and he disappeared. <laughs> and he disappeared. Okay. Great. Good. Now you have your breakthrough, and it's amazing. Now what now? And he's, and he's gone. And what do they do? Very discouraged again. He disappeared again. That day he died and now he's just gone. He was here. I'm sure he was here. But now he just disappeared. Now with what God has done in their lives. Immediately. It says here. Uh, they ask each other. Where were were not our hearts burning with us while he talked with us? They got up and returned at once and went to testify. It is true. He has risen. My brother, my sister, if there's an intermission with you and God, 
in that intermission at, at once. Be ready to talk to people about what Christ is doing in your life. If you're in Christ, if you have that relationship, if you're starting to see him in your life, there will be a once thing. A thing of not once, twice, or thrice. Once, like, there will be an immediate thing. There will be a thing of, I'm immediately ready and passionate to talk about Christ and about what he is doing. It is not an effort to talk about Jesus. It's not an effort to talk about Jesus if you really met him in the sense of I had your time with him. When you have your time with God, there will be a bubbling in here. There will be a, a witnessing in here where you don't feel, I am supposed to talk. I am supposed to give witness. I am supposed to be positive. I am supposed... No, you will be because of the relating that you have with him. Because you meet up with him. And how awesome, how special that Jesus gave these guys that time with him. So I invite you, I leave that. I want to leave that there. To say, make sure in your conversations that you speak in such a way with people and with yourself, with others, that Christ has a desire to be part of the conversation. And that it, not first of all, the demons can recognize that they are, they can be welcome in your conversations with people. And how you talk behind somebody's back about that person. And at least the devil say, I, I, I can be welcome in that man's conversation. We can have fellowship. The Bible says don't have fellowship with demons. But demons, first of all, see how you have fellowship with somebody else and say, that's my kind of fellowship. We can be at home. Make ourselves at home. There. Because it's our type of talk. It's our type of chilling. We can chill out with them. It's our type of party. Or in your conversations, the devil knows uh, we are not welcoming that conversation. These guys are frustrated. They were frustrated. They were confused. They, they had hope for certain things. It didn't happen. There were certain disappointments. That, But even in the place of speaking to somebody and I'm disappointed, I'm frustrated, I, I'm confused, I don't know what happened, even in that place, Jesus wanted to part, be part of that conversation of the devil. So make sure when we are in diff a different state of my, our lives that whatever with whoever I speak, it will be in such a way that Jesus would want to be involved in that conversation. Thank you, my Lord, that you come and you do a work in us, Lord. Thank you, you have risen, Lord. And Many times we don't understand what you are doing in our lives. But God, we want you to be welcome in our conversations. God, even if we feel frustrated with truth, even if we could get angry, God, even if it's not pleasant to hear truth sometimes, oh God, even if we feel the truth makes us miserable, our flesh, give us your grace to work with the truth until the truth sets us free. Help us to see that, Lord. Help us to, to appreciate your truth, appreciate your presence. And that we will not first appreciate the, the, the mentioning of our opinions and what we feel like doing and what we don't feel like doing, Lord but that we will first of all appreciate your presence. And even as we partake in the communion now, Lord, thank you that through the blood we know we have an excellent future with you. And we will not let the frustration, disappointments, expectations that are not met, it will not bring us into fellowship with demons of negativity and judgment and so that we will come into a place of being slow, slow, slow to believe your promises, slow to take the word, slow to change, slow to, to worship you, slow to have time with you, slow. No, we will not be that foolish anymore. Forgive us for that foolishness, Lord. But we will not act like a fool anymore. God, because you gave us your wisdom, 
Therefore, we will not be fools by being slow to react to your word, slow to love you, slow to love others, slow to appreciate your word, slow to take your word and eat it and make it part of us. No. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit in, within us. But thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will remind us of the words of Christ. Explain to us, but God, that we will worship you in the midst of. We will worship you in the midst of whatever we're going through. We thank you for that, Father, that you come and do that in Jesus' name and that name alone. Amen.